Okay, welcome. Today we're going to be talking about diodes and how a diode works. And this is our first semiconductor device, so we have to learn a little bit about the device physics. So we are going to go to Learning Suite and look on our content tab under diodes and we're going to look at the general diode notes. So we see here that here's a Wikipedia page and it says that a diode is a two terminal electronic device that conducts current primarily in one direction. Okay, so what we have is we have this device that's going to let current flow one direction and then block it in the other way. So the basic diode operating operation is that it's a PN junction. So let's look a little bit what that means. So here is the symbol of our diode and it's basically a p-type silicon in contact with an n-type silicon. So in order to understand what in the heck that means, we have to go and look at what p and n-type silicons are. So here's our periodic table and you can see that silicon sits right here and this is in column four. So what column four means is, is that there are four electrons in the valence band, which means that it makes good covalent bonds with each other. So we get the silicon uh, creates this perfect crystal structure. Okay, so we have we have to worry about uh, P and N type regions. So before we do that, we understand about having electrons in the valence bands, but we have to understand what an electron hole is. So let's look here. So what happens is that if we have this atom here and these electrons that are held in this region, for example, this is helium it looks like, and this electron gets pulled off. And so now we have a place here that the electron can go to. So this lack of electron is called a hole. And if we see here with this kind of an animate, you know, kind of picture here, you can see if this one slides over, then this one can slide over into that region. And so we can actually get current flow by a lack of electron because it gets a place for everything to slide into place. Okay, so then we remember that our, P, our PN junction is a P-type silicon and an N-type silicon. So let's start looking at what P-type silicon is. So we have, with a semiconductor, and we're not going to go into a lot of the detail on the physics, but we basically have a, con a valence band down here and a conduction band up here. And we take and we have these little black dots represent electrons that are up in this valence band that can flow around and we have holes down in this band and so these open holes are holes that can flow and so with a p-type semi semiconductor we have a lot more holes available to flow and then if I look up here in an n-type semiconductor there's more electrons that are flowing so with an n-type semiconductor more electrons p-type semiconductor more holes Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to put those two together. And we end up getting, so here is our p-type, and you have more holes over here. Here is our n-type, which has more electrons. Through just general diffusion, we go from high concentration to low concentrations. So this one has excess holes, they're going to flow over to the n-type. This one has excess electrons, they're going to flow over that. When we do, when these flow originally in a p-type semiconductor it's still charge neutral until everything starts to flow over and so now I have extra holes which are positive charge and extra electrons which are negative charge and so what we see here is we end up getting this charge region well, when I get this charge region this is going to create an electric field that's going to oppose that flow. And so now my holes are going to stop flowing over because the charge is going to push the holes back. So we get this region that has these bound electrons and holes and this is called the depletion region. And it's created whenever I put an N and a P-type semiconductors next to each other. Okay, so then when we do this, let's go look at this picture now. Here is our 
region. And so we have this, we have this region in the middle. So we're, what we're looking at here is not the PN region, but this is the voltage versus current relationship. So what ends up happening is, is that depletion region is going to oppose flow of current. Well, when I push my voltage this direction, which is called forward bias, that, that boundary gets smaller and I can flow current. But then if I put voltage in this negative direction, which is called reverse bias, we get only a very small leakage current, so it blocks current flow in this direction. You get to some point, which is called breakdown, and that's where the material can't hold off the flow of electrons anymore and it goes through. We're not going to be covering a lot on breakdown, but we want to look at this relationship, which is the voltage current plot here. Okay, so let's go to LT Spice and look at what it what our diode looks like. Okay, so here is a voltage pulse, and we're just applying this voltage pulse to a diode, just whatever the basic diode is. So if I look at this, so you see here is as a function of time, my voltage is just going up. So it starts at zero volts and it's going up to one volt. And if I look at my current, you can kind of see that it's going up. Well, I want to get a voltage current plot, not a voltage plot and a current plot as a function of time. So you see I labeled this node D. So the voltage at this point is V of D. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to right click and I'm going to change this from time to be voltage of D. So now I have voltage on this act axis and then if I come in here and I do current on that axis I got current going up let's move this over and so what you see here is, is I have this current kind of going along the voltage is going along and then it's going to start going up in this exponential nature right here so the basic model that we're going to be using, that LT Spice is using, is called this, let's go over here, diode modeling. This is called the Schottky diode model. So this is my equation right here. So you see this is my exponential piece where VD is the voltage across the diode and I is the current through the diode. So you can kind of see that if this is, if VD is much, much greater than this N times VT, first of all, let's look at what VT is. So VT is right here is the thermal voltage, which is Boltzmann constant times the temperature divided by the charge of an electron, and that comes out to like 26 millivolts. So if my voltage applied is greater than 26 millivolts, then this term gets way larger than the minus one, and I get this variable right here. So you see, that's this exponential part right here. Now, if VD is negative, then this number here gets really small, and I get a minus, and then I just get this IS. So this IS is this small current right here. So if I throw in a voltage a current probe, you can kind of see that if my current is down here, it's down into the nano or pico amps, which is basically, as far as we're concerned, is zero. So we basically have, this is the equation of my diode, and it creates this exponential piece. 